This conference will now be recorded. Hello, my name is Harrison Midkiff, and I'm the Federal Sales Engineer with Logarithm. Today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a short presentation on Logarithm's capabilities just to give you a better understanding of what Logarithm can do inside your environment. Before I get started, I wanted to review two of the market-leading um, statistical uh, analysis people out there who look at SIN solutions, and that's both Gartner and the Forrester Report. It's interesting to see as you look at these reports that Logarithm not only is up and to the right, but we've had consistent performance in both the Magic Quadrant and in the Forrester Report. These are available on the internet for you to download and review, and you can also reach out to us here at Logarithm, and we'd be happy to provide uh, copies of these for you. Well, that's enough of the PowerPoint. Now what I want to do is I want to dive directly into the Logarithm solution to give you a better understanding of what Logarithm can do and how it can make the life of your cybersecurity analyst easier. First thing you'll notice is I am in my web UI. And in the web UI of the product is where the cybersecurity analyst is going to do their job. Everything is dashboard related to Logarithm. I'm on the executive dashboard right now where I can see the number of messages currently being processed by the solution. I can also see the log trends of how many messages are coming through. Here I can see that I have over 10 million logs that came in. Of the 10 million logs, 100,000 became events. And of those events, I had about 1,000 alarms that were triggered inside the system. This shows the value of using a SIM solution inside the organization because all of these logs are aggregated right here for everybody to see. We also apply classifications of the logs, and we even break it down to the common event. So at the common event level, I can see that I have user log on failures, but why are they bad? They're bad because of uh, bad usernames that are being used. Other dashboards that are user, useful for the analysts, if you're dealing with the uh, NIST uh, ch uh, change control, I can actually make a dashboard showing me all the changes that are happening in the network related to NIST uh, type changes. Uh, if you are heavy on your firewalls, but you don't necessarily want your engineers getting directly into the firewalls, the logs are coming over here to Logarithm. So we can actually make a dashboard and show the activity of applications being reported through the Palo Alto firewall and the actual activities or the session allowed traffic that we see. If I'm ever interested in these logs, all I have to do is put this little arrow down here at the bottom. The logs will pull up for me. I can see the raw log itself and I can even see all the metadata that was extracted from it. Well, now let's have a little bit of fun with this and let's actually look at a real event happening. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my screen over here and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go over to my alarms screen. And then at the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into a system as a privileged user. I'm logging in as a user here called Sammy. Sammy is one of the people in the organization that has the coveted keys to the castle. What I mean by that as coveted keys to the castle is that he is a member of the domain admins group. By being a member of the domain admins group, he can get in and he can actually do things such as elevate the permissions on his account. So I'm going to come in here and I am real quick, I am going to add him to the intelligence group and I'm going to also add Sammy to the developers group. Okay, Maybe this is part of his job, maybe it's not. Right over here in the logarithm tool, you can see right here that I have an alarm came in, privilege user login. I see the name of the server and I see it's Sammy. You'll also notice on here, I have a smart response capability on here. That's the ability to be able to remediate this. If I scroll down in my window right here, I have a smart response capability, which is to log the user off the system, and all I have to do is hit this approve button, and it would then log them off the system. While I was looking at that, two more logs came in, and these are logs that came in for Sammy adding himself to privileged user groups on here. So there's one, uh, oops, we're on the wrong log. Here's one added himself to the developers group. And here's a second one that added himself to the intelligence group. Now, this might be Sammy doing his job, but this is enough for me to on the fly create a case uh, about Sammy so I can start to track this. So I'm going to call this Sammy up to no good. And I'll go ahead and I'll save that. Because I had these other two alarms that came in. I'm going to take those alarms on the fly and I'm going to add that to the current case because now I'm starting to build a case over what Sammy is doing. 
well, now let's come back over here to being Sammy. And I come back over here to being Sammy and he elevated his permissions and he elevated his permissions so he could get into this folder and he could look at a document and he's opening up in a document that's called Operation Cold Steel. Sensitive document on the network, I should be notified when these documents are opened. Well, then what he's gonna do is he's gonna take this document, he's going to copy the document, and then he has a USB stick plugged into this computer, and he's going to paste that onto a USB stick. All things that Sammy shouldn't be doing. Then at the same time, what Sammy's gonna do is he's gonna go for one of the hacker's favorite utilities, and that's seven zip to zip of content. Let's come back over here and look at the dashboard now and see what we're seeing as far as alarms. There's an abnormal file access and there is the name of the file, Operation Cold Steel. This is Sammy still doing something weird, and I'm going to say I'm going to add that to the current case, so we're adding that in. And then right on the heels of that, I have another alarm that came in, file copy to USB stick, and it's Sammy again. All of this is the type of thing that is suspicious inside the environment, and I need to call my supervisor and figure out what's going on. Just as this one came in, another one came in, and it's a restricted process execution. There's the user Sammy again, and there's the program 7-Zip. You'll notice over here on the alarm card, I have a smart response action on here, and I can remediate this on the fly. The smart response action is to kill the process on the system. Well, in my organization, if 7-Zip if comes up, it's never allowed because it could be as people zipping up content, so I'm going to hit approve on this, and it's going to kill the 7-zip that's running on the desktop. So if you look right there, you'll see 7-zip. Give it a few seconds. There it goes. It actually just closed it out. Well, once Sammy sees that, he knows that they're on to him now. So now what he's going to do is he's going to open up a, uh, uh, an SSH type session. And what he's going to do is he's going to attempt to connect to a server on the open internet and transfer content down to the organization. These types of applications are highly restricted inside an organization, and they should never be allowed to get out to these types of uh, systems, because obviously that could be somebody taking content and getting it out of the uh, system, out of the network. So if we give it just a second longer, and we should get another alarm that will come in here in just a second, and it'll tell us that uh, we have uh, Tor-type traffic being detected, because he's actually trying to hit a Tor server. There I can see the name of the server, and I'm even seeing the IP address that he's going to. Well, all of this is going right back to Sammy. This is just too much for us to deal with. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to the current case and we need to shut Sammy down. My case management is right over here on the left side of the screen, so I'll pop that out. I can see all the cases, uh, or excuse me, all the alarms that I added in. And I'm gonna come down to that privileged user logged in right here. And this is the point I need to shut it down. So I'm gonna move over here to this side where the smart response is. I'm going to approve that smart response, and then what that's going to do is it's going to log him off the system, and you can see I'm logging him off the system right there. So the analyst has been able to watch all these alarms come in and work everything from that. The last part of the case, just to close this thing out, so I come over here to the cases. There's my Sammy up to no good right there, so I'll click on it. I end up with evidence, all the alarms and everything that I put uh, in, uh, in here. I also have metrics on this, time to qualify was one minute. I can associate other cases to this and I can see all the history that's associated with this is how things were added, things that people did to the case, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna come over to the metrics right here and we're gonna do a textbook close of the case. So we're gonna take the case, turn it to an incident. We're gonna call it mitigated and then I'm going to recall it resolved and I'll put on here he was doing his job because as odd as it may sound maybe he wasn't doing his job and now notice what happens with the metrics from the time this incident started time to detect was one minute the time to respond that it took us to do this was four minutes this is exactly the type of automation and orchestration that you want inside your network for your security engineers to be able to use anyways i hope you found this uh, short demo of the logarithm solution informative if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you and have a nice day.